Carpal tunnel syndrome can be a really uncomfortable condition which can cause burning, tingling or numbness in your thumb, index finger, middle finger and half of the ring finger which is the area in your hand that's supplied by the median nerve. Now these symptoms can affect one or both of your hands and they can be worse at night time. You might have noticed that you try shake your wrist to get rid of the symptoms and over time you may even lose the grip strength in your hand and struggle to do things like opening jars and doing buttons on your shirt. Now in this video we're going to cover some of the ways that you can try help improve your carpal tunnel symptoms at home and when you should go and see your doctor. So the first thing to do is to try and avoid repetitive hand or wrist movements and take regular breaks from tasks that precipitate symptoms. Often this is when you're typing at a computer and your wrist is in an awkward position or you're using a mouse. It might also be when you're driving long distances. Now, if this is the case, you might be entitled to a workplace assessment if there's a work-based component that could be causing you symptoms. So for example, if you're sitting for many hours at your desk using a computer as part of your job and you've developed these symptoms, then I would encourage you to speak to your boss and ask for a referral to an occupational health specialist. Now, the occupational health specialist may help you to be able to think of ways to manage your working environment and make it more ergonomic. And you could consider things like an ergonomic mouse and a keyboard to try and relieve the symptoms and prevent it from coming back. Now, the second thing to try and consider is something like a wrist splint in a neutral position at night time. Now, these can be purchased online or at your local pharmacy, and you need to wear it every night for at least six weeks. And I've included some links to wrist splints in the description box of this video to give you some ideas of what these are and where you can get them from. Now, the next important thing to try and do are hand exercises and median nerve mobilization techniques. Now, I'm going to give you three exercises here that you could try doing at home. And the first is to start with your fingertips touching and then pointing down towards the floor. You then want to spread your fingers as far apart as possible and steeple the fingers by separating the palm of the hands, but keeping those fingers together. So you're going to put your hands down, spread the fingers and push the palms out. Now the second exercise is just to shake your hands out and this is as straightforward as it sounds. Shake your hands like you've just washed them and you're trying to air dry them and do this for a minute or two every hour to keep the flexor muscles of your hands and its median nerve from getting cramped and tight during the day. Now the third exercise is a wrist flexor stretch and this is the deepest stretch of the three exercises so you may find this slightly difficult or uncomfortable to do. Now to do this first extend your arm out in front of you with the palm facing upwards. Next, you want to bend your wrist back and point the hand towards the floor. And with the other hand, gently bend the wrist further back until you feel a stretch, usually in the forearm here. So you want to hold this stretch for about 15 to 30 seconds and repeat it three or four times. The final tip is to apply cold packs three to five times a day for five minutes at a time to help reduce the pain in the area that is being affected. So when should you go and see your doctor? Well, if your symptoms don't improve after six weeks of trying these things, then you'll likely need to seek medical input. Similarly, if your symptoms worsen or new things develop, such as a weakness in the hand, you should seek a medical opinion. They might discuss offering you a steroid injection, and this may be carried out in primary care if there's an appropriate expertise and experience available. Otherwise, they may arrange referral to a local musculoskeletal service or an orthopedic surgeon. This is gonna depend on the local pathways that are available. If all of the conservative at-home treatments don't work, then you might need to be referred to a specialist who will want to do certain investigations. So these are going to be things like nerve conduction studies. The final option that's going to be offered to you if it's deemed appropriate and weighing up the risks and benefits is carpal tunnel surgery. However, like I've mentioned, this does have certain risks. So you can develop a sensitive scar, you can get neurovascular damage, and you can get ongoing pain. Carpal tunnel has also been found to return even after surgery in around 12% of patients. Now to help you learn a little bit more about carpal tunnel, including the symptoms and further management, I've put together a list of great additional trusted resources in the description box of this video. And this includes things like the NHS website, the British Society for Surgery of the Hand, and the Royal College of Surgeons. So please do check out these resources. And if you've got any other questions that I wasn't able to cover here, please let me know in the comment section and I'll do my best to try help you. But please remember, I can't give individual medical advice. Finally, if you've had carpal tunnel syndrome and you've got top tips that you want to share to help others, then please also leave them in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video and you learned something new, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. And until next time, bye.